Hello, everyone. So my research is about something we live in every and each day, but we do not give it an importance just because we cannot see it. Yet, only this week, the World Health Organization has shown that it is responsible for 7 million deaths per year. 6 million among them are only children under 15 years old. And what I'm talking about is nothing more than air pollution. That's why everyone worldwide is trying their best to solve this issue. Uh, China, for instance, has been paying tens of billions uh, to win this fight. But let's be honest, uh, developing countries cannot afford such investments. Uh, and because, like, just to monitor air quality, we need huge monitoring stations that are extremely expensive, needs a lot of um, maintenance. And uh, the, the worst of all is that these stations are not even placed in urban areas where people actually live. So in our project, we maintain a new approach. So we take very few monitoring stations, small ones, and we go into neighborhoods. We talk to people, we interact with them, we take the same path that they take, and that gave us insight into a lot of new sources of pollution. Uh, like, for example, for traffic, uh, here it's one of the worst and the main causes of pollution, while in very disadvantaged areas where a lot of sick people come from, it's not actually traffic. It's thrift shops, it's uh, street food vendors, and it's traditional bats and traditional, uh, and traditional ovens that use coil and uh, wood, burning wood. So uh, maybe the data collection was a little bit challenging and maybe risky, but it was totally worth it because using artificial, uh, artificial intelligence methods, we were able not to only predict air quality in a, in a wide scale, but to also do spatiotemporal forecasting using all the features that we are concerned with in every specific area, like the ones, the existence of the streets and uh, vendors and the traditional ovens, and also like the heights of buildings and uh, the density of buildings and the density of population and meteorological plus traffic features. So this is a model that is more general and that allows uh, everything and uh, every specific area to be treated the way uh, it is concerned. Not only this, but our model also helped us reduce the number of sensors we are using, so that way uh, we can also predict some uh, pollutants based on uh, other measurements of other pollutants. So that's it, and if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer. Thank you. No. That was a great, almost no applause. Any questions? <laughs> no questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome.